It is 5.45 on the morning of Thursday, May 16, 1968. Ivy Hodge is an early riser. She gets out of bed in her flat on the 18th floor of Ronan Point, a newly built tower block in East London. It had been a warm night. Temperatures the day before had topped 27 degrees Celsius, and some residents were unhappy about the excessive heat in the block. Yet even on this muggy May morning, Ivy wanted to start the day with a cuppa. She went into her kitchen to make a brew on the gas cooker. A second after she struck a match, there was a loud bang. Ivy was thrown back across the kitchen and out of the way of onrushing danger. Everything sort of shook. The bang was followed by shouts and cries from tenants of the block caught up in the blast. One resident described how everything sort of shook. The explosion had been caused by a faulty fitting connecting the cooker to the wall standpipe. It triggered a progressive collapse in the southeast corner of the building. The blast had blown out the load-bearing sidewalls that held up the apartments above Ivy's. Without this crucial support, the flats fell in on themselves. This was the moment at which disaster became inevitable. Ronin Point had been built without alternate load paths. These functioned like shock absorbers. In response to an external strike, like an airplane collision, or internal shock, like an explosion in a kitchen, the load paths absorb and redirect the energy away from the most vulnerable parts of the building. Without this kind of structural integrity, the shockwave caused by the collapse of the flats at the top ran a destructive path all the way down the building. Four people were killed instantly. Their names were Thomas and Pauline Morrell, Thomas McCluskey, and Edith Bridgestock. Thirteen more were injured and eighty families were made homeless. The official inquiry and independent investigations by activists and journalists exposed a litany of errors in the planning, design, and construction of Ronan Point. You can read about the significant changes that were made to building design and construction codes following the collapse. Ronan Point was a 22-story tower block in Canningtown in Newham, East London, that partly collapsed on May 16, 1968, only two months after it had opened. A gas explosion blew out some load-bearing walls, causing the collapse of one entire corner of the building, four people died and 17 were injured. The spectacular nature of the failure, caused by both poor design and poor construction, led to a loss of public confidence in high-rise residential buildings, and major changes in British building regulations resulted. Ronan Point, named after Deputy Mayor Harry Ronan, a former chairman of the Housing Committee of the London Borough of Newham, was part of the wave of tower blocks built in the 1960s as cheap, affordable prefabricated housing for inhabitants of West Ham and other areas of London. The tower was built by Taylor Woodrow Anglian using a technique known as large panel system building which involves casting large concrete prefabricated sections off-site and bolting them together to construct the building. The precast system used was the Danish Larsen and Nielsen system. Construction started in 1966 and was completed on March 11, 1968. Progressive collapse or disproportionate collapse of a building occurs when the failure of a single structural element leads to the failure of other components in a progressive manner. The failure starts with the primary structural element, accompanied by the failure of adjoining elements, finally resulting in structural collapse. In general, experts have recommended three approaches to avoid this. The first one is by providing key elements, which can sustain the effect of accidental action, recommended as a uniformly distributed load of 34 knots per square meter. Secondly, the structure should be provided with alternate load path and lastly is the provision of stability ties. What do you think? Leave your comment below.